Hi guys, this is the first video I'm going to do to kick off a series on just how to start knife making. Um, I want to do this so that people can kind of get through it with the least amount of frustration. It's a great hobby to have, but I'm going to talk about the first thing you need to get before you get the power hammer and the forge and you know like the electric kiln that's clicking away beside me. You need to get a little bit of knowledge and specifically I recommend knowledge about steel. The right steel for the job is important, but not as important as knowing how to get the best from a particular steel. So I say that because you hear things thrown around like 5160 is great for making large knives and bowies, ADCRV2 for making swords, uh, 440C for stainless cutlery, you know, all of that's important, but it's not as important as the heat treatment was to make that blade do its job. So if you're just starting out, it's likely that you don't have a lot of the right tools to work some of the more complicated steels. Now, I'll cover that a little bit more later on. I don't want to get too technical or make it too much of a metallurgy lesson. I just want to focus on how to help beginners start the process. Um, I get asked a lot, what's the best steel to use for making this type of knife or that type of knife? Um, I'm just getting started. It's Probably the wrong question you ask. Again, the first question you should ask is, how can I heat treat any type of steel? And if you don't have, say, a blowtorch, you don't already have a forge set up, you don't have an electric oven for, you know, that will take you up to 1200 degrees Celsius, but you do have something like this, a little burns and matic at gas torch, there's a great steel to start with. It's a simple carbon steel. 1075 or 1084. Now, you might have heard from a lot of people that you can just find old steel, old steel like springs, files, bearings, you know. Sure, a lot of great knives get made out of those, and those are generally made of the same type of steel that knife makers really enjoy using. But there's a big difference between, say, this rusty, worn out leaf spring that I cut out of my old housemate's uh, his boat trailer and you know a clean bar of SUP9 that I've bought from a store. I know it's SUP9, I can look up how to heat treat it and I can at least try and get the best from the blade. I'll have a process, I'll have a repeatable process so if there's anything you know amiss I can go back look at what I've done and correct it and then slowly work towards getting repeatable results. The reason I say you might not be able to get repeatable results with steel like this is that there's a lot of variables, there's unknowns. Firstly, I can't be guaranteed the composition, especially for something cheap like a uh, boat trailer spring. I can't even look up what the makers of these were using. Um, some makes of cars you can find out. Um, you know, uh, Some of the other variables are, does it have fractures in it? Springs go undergo a huge amount of load. This one's particularly rusty. It's been backed into salt water, you know, probably dozens of times. Uh, that's conducive to chewing away at little, you know, spots where it starts to fatigue. And sure enough, there'd be stress fractures in here that start to open up as the spring flexes. Um, definitely, when I've been forging this, I know it didn't behave anything like 5160 or SUP9. Um, didn't feel as heavy under the hammer and it started to kind of split a lot earlier than I thought it would at not particularly high, not particularly low temperature. So um, given we replaced these springs for about 25 bucks, I'd say they were a pretty measly type of steel. So back to 1075, it can be heat treated by the beginner simply because um, it's a very bare bones sort of steel. It's iron, and carbon with a few other things added in. Um, it gets used industrially as an actual cutting blade and also a spring kind of material. Um, you can heat treat this with a small cheap blowtorch and if you're starting out the cheap tools like the blowtorch that are going to do your heat treating are fine. You know you might not know if you want to progress with this hobby so it's good just to have something accessible that you can get from Bunnings and just get a move on with. Um, 1075 being such a simple steel doesn't need a soak time so it is a very hot flame that comes out of these torches but it's a small flame it's going to be hard to keep 
too much steel at the same temperature for a long time. So if you're doing something like W2 or ADC RV2 that need to be soaked for a little while, you just aren't going to get consistent results trying to keep you know, a four and a half inch section at 850 degrees Celsius with a little torch like that. Um, you might get it too hot in the center, whereas the back near the handle of the blade is staying cool. Uh, when you go to quench that, you'll have inconsistencies in hardness, which can lead to failure, um, or it might just never really be fully at the right hardness, uh, right temperature, sorry, and when you quench, the hardness just won't be there at all. 1075 and 1084, on the other hand, they don't need a soak. They're such simple steels, and they're what's known as a, a eutectoid steel, or close to a eutectoid. Um, they're in a happy place where you don't need to soak them for too long. Um, it's around 815 to 830 degrees Celsius, and then you get them straight into an oil. It can be a cheap oil um, that you've got laying around the house, you know, vegetable oil, peanut oil, canola oil. Don't use old motor oil, it lets off fumes. It's probably not, not the most consistent of substances all the way through, which won't give you a consistent quench across the length of your steel. Um, you know, it's just not best practice. It's going to make a mess, it's hard to get rid of. So, this steel, being close to the eutectoid, doesn't need to be soaked. It also isn't going to, you know, break the bank. If you mess up a few of these blades, it's not going to cost you the earth. You get a bar of it for 30 something dollars from Gamaco. Um, relatively thin, you can get it. Um, that's easy, it means you're not going to have to grind a heap of stock away. Um, small stock is going to be a lot easier to heat up consistently. Um, it's also going to cool down fast when you get into the oil. Um, putting the steel into the oil is probably one of the things I, I find that the most fun. The heat treating and forming of the knife is great. Uh, putting the handles on, not so much, I get bored. I have lots of very nice knives sitting there in my workshop with no handles on them. But um, yeah, choosing the right steel and knowing how you're going to heat treat it will make the world of difference um, when it comes to finishing knives and have knives that actually hold their edge, you know, at the end of the day that's what you want. Everyone wants the knife that's going to be nice and flexible and hold an edge when in reality you're just sort of moving between those two points um, based on different properties of the steel and how close you can get to the optimal properties through your heat treatment. Anyway guys, I feel like I get a little bit sidetracked talking about steel, so just to summarise, 1084 and 1075 are great steels for beginners because they can be done with very rudimentary equipment. It's because the temperature that they heat treat at isn't terribly high, 815 to 830 degrees, which is just past their critical temperature, around where they become non-magnetic. Uh, that's another great feature of these steels. You can test them with a magnet as they kind of, they'll start to look an orange colour don't heat treat steel by going and looking at the colour of it. You know, with 1084 and 1075, get yourself a good magnet. Like uh, I like to use welders magnets because I can stick them to things if I need to do a heat treat this way, or I can tie them up and let them dangle. And as I hold a piece of steel close to them, if they're still magnetic, I'll see the magnet angling towards them. So you'll easily have means of telling if you're heat treating them correctly as you're heat treating them. Once the steel just becomes non-magnetic, as I said before, it doesn't need to be soaked. You just go straight into the oil. It's inexpensive, so if you mess up a few of these blades, it doesn't matter so much. It's accessible. It's a steel that you can use for as long as you like because it's easy to get. Um, and some guys don't stop using it. Look at uh, Ian Stewart. He just uses 1084 for like, every one of the blades he's ever made that I've seen. Like, he, might, he might have used other steels. I don't think so though. He really likes 1084. Um, you can have a lot of fun with it because it's so simple. Once you get that heat treatment down, you don't have to worry so much about the heat treatment. You don't have to keep spending money just yet until maybe you want to do some other more creative things. It gives you time to think about your grind, your handles. You know, there's plenty of other things that can go wrong in making a knife besides just getting your heat treatment correct. So why make the heat treatment hard for yourself to begin with?
All up, as a steel, 1084 and 1075 are good steels. Um, when I'm on the phone with people and they're saying, I just want to start out, I just want to, you know, what's a good steel? I just want to use the good steel to make a knife. I just want to make one knife um, and then I'll get it out of my system. I won't care anymore. I chuckle because I know that's not true. They'll make one knife, they'll look at it and think, I can do that better, I can do that better, I can do that better. And all of a sudden they've made five knives. Um, 1084 and 1075, we don't recommend them to beginners because they're a crap steel by any means. It's for the reasons I've outlined already. Um, as a carbon steel, they make a good kitchen knife, they make a good outdoor hunting knife, they make a good anything. Um, I use 1084 as like the carbon bit in forge welded axes. Um, it is kind of one of, it's half the component of a lot of people's carbon steel Damascus. It's got a lot of versatility in that steel, and that's why you know people will use it, you know, for their entire knife making career. It's sure, it's fun to mix it up with other steels, but uh, just as a beginner, it's a great place to start.